Hello everybody and welcome to episode 35. Um, we got bombs going, we've got some coins going, and now we're going to start working on uh, more of the UI for the game. So getting these coins to actually do anything. Uh, so we, we vacuum them up at the moment, but we're not making a number get big. And what are video games if not about making numbers get big? So we're going to get a little coin icon on a number and we're going to you know, just make it so when we collect these coins, something actually happens. Um, we already have all of the, the bones for this setup when we create the collectibles in the first place. So now it's just about sort of putting them into action. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to come to um, O game. So I'm going to press Control T, type O game, which will get us straight to that object. Um, apparently I had it open already. Let's actually close this workspace down. It's a bit cluttered. Open that again. O game. And come to the create event. Or I'm just going to add in, uh, just in the player section here, global dot player uh, money equals zero. Uh, next, we're going to create um, another sprite for the coin. Um, I'm just going to duplicate our existing coin, call it S coin um, UI. And we're going to delete these frames of animation that we don't need to. We just have the first one and just move the um, origin point. Uh, to be top left. That's just the easiest one. Um, you might think, well, this is the exact same as this, right? And it is. The, literally, the only reason we have another sprite for it is just so that we can have a different origin. Um, there are other ways you could accomplish the same thing just by using like uh, some of the draw commands, like don't respect the origin, and you could use that. Um, but this is just the simplest way. Okay, just make another copy of the sprite um, and the, the origin on the top left just uh, makes it helpful for us if we know that every time we want to draw stuff to the GUI it's um, we're using top left just to help us keep our um, coordinates consistent because we're going to have to do a lot of like magic numbers and stuff like that to work out where we want to position stuff on the screen and so if stuff if we have a consistent idea of when we draw images to it where um, where those origins are going to be um, that's helpful like the same for you know s health there in the top left and so on okay all right, next up, we're going to go to OUI. And the draw GUI is the, the only event we have for this so far. We're going to maximize this. Um, this is just where we were drawing the health. Um, so underneath that, um, and I'm going to change the description of this to just a draw UI. We'll draw health here so that it's like split into two sections. And uh, this is going to be um, a section just for drawing. Uh, the the coins the amount of coins that we have um, first of all I'm going to do uh, var um, xx and yy um, that's just going to create those variables without actually assigning anything to them yet just so they're ready for us to use um, and then the first thing we're going to draw is the coin icon so first of all, I'm going to set xx to equal eight and yy to equal thirty one and then I'm going to draw sprite s coin UI zero, uh, that's frame zero, um, XX uh, underscore YY. All right, now you might be thinking, those are very specific numbers there, Jean, um, and they are. Um, originally, when I first scripted this, I actually used a bunch of constants for this, thinking like, oh, let's try and keep it like modular and so on, and not use too many magic numbers. Um, but honestly, um, I've come to prefer just having the magic numbers here, especially for the sake of the tutorial, because it's simpler. Just putting the numbers in, um, working them out and thinking, okay, that's got to be that, that's got to be that, and just knowing what they're going to be. Just because the UI for this game is fairly simple, and that actually doesn't need a whole lot of modularity. The advantage is if you do uh, put in some numbers, like um, for XX, I had a margin number, right? Um, so I was like, I decided everything should be drawn um, a certain amount like into the screen as a margin, right? So where we draw the health is like eight in, I think. Like even here, yeah, we use eight here. And I think originally I used UI margin for this, for example. And then that makes it so in theory, if I wanted to change that margin and bring everything in by as mount, I can just change that one number. It is helpful to do these kind of things, especially as your project gets bigger. But we're gonna keep it simple for now. And I'm just gonna do my best to remind you that there are better ways to do that kind of thing for a longer term. Um, rather than just create, like, you just because I have to show you everything step by step here. So rather than show you like creating loads of endless constants or whatever, just to try and make this modular. And sometimes you can add too many and add things that it just makes it harder when you want to manipulate things. Okay, okay, where is that constant again? Let's go change that one to move things around and trying to remember what all the constants are when you're trying to come up with how far things should be into the screen. 
can make things take a really long time to set up uh, just the same. But um, generally speaking, yes, I wouldn't recommend just using entirely hard-coded numbers. Try and think wherever you can of things that will be modular. Like I said, a margin that will constantly be the same, so everything will be a certain amount of margin in, because then it allows you to cleanly change that when you need to. Um, I, I don't know what the Y was determined from in the first place, probably like wherever the, the, the health is, the height of that sprite and so on, but it was getting too specific and like... Um, it became more helpful to me in the end to just use a magic number for this. So that's all I'm doing. All right, you can do that however you want to, just to explain why I'm doing it the way I am. Next up, let's actually make this text a whole bunch bigger because this is going to be most of what we're looking at right now. I'll scroll down to the bottom here. Um, so there's that if you missed any of that because it was a bit small. Um, next up, we want to do coin text. Let's just get some space just so I can actually see. There we go. Um, first of all, we obviously we want to draw some text, so the first thing you want to do before drawing any text is set the, the four magic uh, variables. So draw, set, color, first of all, uh, color with a U or a, not a U, up to you. Uh, C, black, draw, set, font, F, text, uh, draw, set, H align, uh, F, A, left, draw, set, V align, FA top, up to you if you wanted to use a different font for this as well. I'm just trying to be consistent. Not est, set. Okay, and now I recommend, I probably recommended this before, but I can't remember if I did. Um, recommend just making a function that actually takes in four arguments and sets like draw set color to be like argument zero, argument one, and so on. Um, because then you can, I usually have one in most of my projects called draw set text. And then I would just type like C black, F text, uh, F A left, and so on. And that function would just do all these things for me, just because uh, you, you want to do these things kind of a lot when you start drawing text in different places in your game, and you always want to do these at the start every time. And it's a big chunk of ugly looking text that um, it, it is nice to be able to just get rid of and turn into one line. Um, so I highly recommend doing that. It saves you a bit of time, makes things look a bit cleaner. Um, we're only not doing that to save time in the tutorial. Uh, how much time I actually save, I don't know, because uh, I end up explaining so much of why I do it anyway. <laughs> Maybe I could have just done the thing. But nonetheless, this is how we're doing. So um, next up, I'm going to take XX and I'm going to add uh, sprite get width S coin UI plus four. So we're not being entirely magic number here because we know where XX is for in terms of where we draw this. And then if we change this, we're going to affect both where we draw the um, the coin icon and where we draw the amount, uh, uh, the actual amount of coins we're carrying the text, okay? Um, so that's helpful. So I'm just taking that, adding the width of the coin to it, because we know it needs to be at least that amount, and then just some buffer after it, okay? So I've decided four pixels after it looked okay, so that's what I'm going with. Then YY is going to just, I'm going to set YY to be 27. Uh, that's just something I worked out. This is really just annoying um, with... With Game Maker and I suppose a lot of other engines, I don't know, maybe it's more of a Game Maker issue. I don't have enough experience with other engines to know, but like text placement is such a pain because uh, the alignments like FA top, um, middle and bottom, it feels like they do something different with every single font. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to kind of work out like based on the font settings or whatever like how exactly a thing looks with top aligned bottom aligned and so on especially when you're trying to get things like aligned within a pixel and get things properly like aligned and lined up and it can lead to a lot of just really arbitrary ugly magic numbers like this like the icon is at 31 and then this is at 27 um, this is what I worked out looked okay, so if you're using the same fonts and everything as me, this will look alright. Otherwise, you'll just have to experiment a bit. I haven't worked out any modular magic or anything really to, to help with aligning text other than just it's, it's annoying and it's hard work. That's, that's just sort of how it be. Um, UI and text and stuff in Game Maker is always just annoying. Um, I don't know if other engines have it better. <laughs> uh, anyway, next up, Varstra. The string is just going to equal string global dot player money. That variable we set to zero. Uh, then we're going to do four draw texts. So I'm going to do draw text um, xx um, yy str 
So we're just going to draw the text at that position and I'm going to copy it four times. Um, yeah, four times. And then I'm going to add plus one to this one's X, subtract one from this one's X, um, add one to this one's Y, subtract one from this one's Y. Um, this is just to create a black outline because you say our color is currently black. And then we're going to draw a set color to see white um, and paste another of these underneath, um, but actually just at X, X and Y, Y that's white. So it'll go in the middle and it'll create a nice uh, black outline around the text. Okay. Um, this is obviously is not super efficient, like doing draw text a whole bunch of times, but don't worry about it. We're making a very simple 2D game. It, like if you only do this sparingly, it's a very effective way of just dynamically adding a border to something. It's perfectly fine. I do it all the time. It doesn't really cost that much. Um, if it's more in things like your uh, dialogue system, for example, and then, like you're, you're doing a letter by letter drawing, like all with this, it's going to be more of a problem. But when you do it limited, um, in a limited way, such as this, where we're just you know drawing a single number to the top of the screen like this, don't worry about doing a whole bunch of draw calls. It's not a big deal, okay? That said, you might be wondering, well, how would you do it in an effective way? Um, there are tools you can get that will like uh, help you modify sprites and create like pixel um, sprite fonts, as it were, um, and, and things like that, where you can actually like just have the borders uh, built in. There are shaders you can use. There's a whole bunch of different approaches. Um, so feel free to look into them. Just Google, Google around like how to draw borders on, on, on text. There's loads of different approaches. Um, but as I said, don't worry about doing it this way. Now, before we go any further, um, let's just, uh, zoom out a little bit so you can see like our two, two big sections in the UI there. And let's just run that. Um, so we can see this. Oh, this happened last time. I don't know what that's going on here. It's drawing a little dot instead of the coin. Uh, but then I think if I just run it again, uh, it, it works now. I don't know. I don't know if that's because I'm in the beta and there's some bug. I'm not sure. But for some reason, whenever I added that sprite, I did this when I was like testing this and saying this from the first place for this episode. The first time I ran it, it just showed a little dot. Don't know why. Just something hasn't properly cached that new sprite yet or something. I'm not sure. But either way, run it perhaps twice and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have this coin over here and it should be working just fine. Um, as you'll note though, the number isn't going up when we collect anything, um, so that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so this part's probably the simplest overall, I guess. Uh, we're going to make a new script. Um, first of all, so I'm going to create a new script and I'm going to call it um, collect functions, because we're actually going to make use of the new 2.3 onwards uh, functionality of putting multiple functions um, in one script. Okay, so I'm going to write, first of all, function uh, collect coins open bracket, underscore, amount, close bracket. Um, and global dot player money plus equal amount. That's it, that's the whole function. Um, obviously in here later on we're gonna, we'll have more things like for collecting, uh, collect, uh, collect bombs and that'll increase a different thing and so on. And you might be wondering, well, why not just whenever we wanna gain money, why not just write this one line? We're only replacing one line with another one line, right? Collecting, uh, collect, uh, collect bombs, and that'll increase a different thing and so on. And you might be wondering, well, why not just, whenever we want to gain money, why not just write this one line? We're only replacing one line with another one line, right? And the reason we do it is just essentially building for the future, because say we wanted anything else to happen when we collected coins, which is very reasonable. Maybe you want a uh, like, I don't know, some sort of magic flash to happen or something like that, or the, the coin in the top left maybe like does a little bounce or grows or something, or you play a sound effect or I, I don't know, anything, anything else you want to happen in your game every single time you get money, we can now do it in this function, um, just, just like underneath here, and it will happen every time that we've called this throughout the game, okay? That's why we do it. Otherwise, we'd have to go through every place where we added this and add extra stuff okay that's that's why sorry if that's really obvious i just thought it was you know some people might think it's it's one line for one line what are we saving but that's what that's what we're saving okay uh last of all we just need to make this uh, function actually get called so just a quick reminder since you know we did a whole episode on bombs which might have distracted you a bit um and it was a while ago i know it's taking time between some of these episodes but um if we come back to our collectible you remember how they work is when we collect them 
they run the script that they have assigned through their variable definitions, okay? And if they have any arguments, they'll run it with those, those arguments set. So all we have to do is go to OCoin, go to variable definitions, come to the bottom here, um, where we have collect script and collect script arg. We'll just toggle those as editable. And in collect script, we'll write collect coins, which is the name of the function inside collect functions and collect script arg will be one. So we'll get one coin per coin we pick up. All right, um, run that now. And if I run over here, break that open, you can see we got a whole bunch of coins. It looked a bit weird there because I think I got like three at once from this plant, but it's, yeah, you can see I've got one there, pick up another one, eight, nine, and then 10 from the first one coming out of there, 11, 12. We can just scoop up all these and you can see that's just building up over time now. All right, and we'll do something very similar for our bombs when we get, um, uh, when we start making it so we can kind of carry bombs in an, in an inventory of sorts. And we'll have like a bomb UI up here and uh, make it so when you pick up bomb drop items from like these plants or whatever, it'll increase the number there and we'll be able to sort of use them to throw more bombs, okay? Um, but it all works the same way. Again, just keeping everything really modular because it just makes things faster and faster as we go. That's everything for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. A shout out in particular, and in no particular order, to the following Max M, Raildor, Bowser the Dog, Seanathan, James Grimley, Robert Churches, Daka Dondigo, Bertie T, Relentless Rex, Jason, Dark Rider 0318, Rupinda, Rene Dam, Samir Nyaya Ligaglow, Yoram Pater, Cabbage Pants Figgy, Kaiser Ho, Reva, Verpaleon, Andrew Gilbert, Jason Welch, Phil Keen, Vacants, Jordan Hake, John C, Feral Princess, Arctics, Rachel Stewart, It's Matt Poor, Stephen Shenier, John Keenai, Michael Kolich, Julian Cropley, James. James Ballard, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Harvig, Tranquil, Jake Rumsey, Darth Wolf, Isaac Miller, Gary, Sean Paul, Eric Santana, Adrian.exe, Josh Furbin, Mankind One, JD O'Dea, Patrick Scheiss, Jiminy Whippets, Timothy Hare, Blunt, BSC, Troy Nall, and Adrian. Thank you all so much for your support and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.